guys, how you doing? Uh, I just wanted to quickly go through um, getting your uh, Windows machine uh, up and going. So here's a little video for uh, for doing that. So once you finish downloading your uh, your virtual machine, you're still going to have to unzip it, just like you did for the um, the Apache one or for the Fedora one. So you just get into a folder, right click on it, say extract all. Wait a couple of minutes, you'll get another folder here. Just double click on that folder so you can see that you uh, you have the file unzipped properly. Make sure that you don't do this. Don't go into the zip file. This won't work from inside the zip file. So you have to unzip it. Just make sure you're in the folder, not the zip file. Now, you want to start up VirtualBox. which I probably should have done before I started the video. Uh, then we're going to import an appliance. I'm going to pick our appliance. Okay, we just search for that folder that has the appliance in it. The appliance is another word for virtual machine. You say okay. Next. Now, in my case, I'm changing the location of where this is going to go. So I want it on my D drive. That's just kind of how my system is set up. Okay, and then I want to import. And I just have to wait. So if you do want to change and have all your virtual machines in a particular folder. That's all you have to do to have your virtual machines laying in a different spot. So other than this, it's just a matter of waiting for the virtual machine to uh, to unpack and then you start it up. A uh, couple of things can happen uh, depending on how your BIOS is set up and some of the settings inside of VirtualBox itself. So one thing you'll need to do for sure is you'll need to turn the PAE settings on. And I'll, I'll show you where to do that now in a second. Uh, the other thing that you'll probably have to do if you're running on uh, uh, a HP or I think the Dells are the same way, uh, that uh, you may need to uh, turn on the, um, the hyper... Uh, hyper-threading or the virtualization support in your um, in the BIOS on your computer so um, to be quite honest I'm not sure if it's on on this computer because I only got this computer um, I believe it was a week ago Thursday so um, I haven't had this computer for very long and obviously I don't have this particular virtual machine installed on it yet. So once the uh, once it's finished uh, unpacking, we're going to try to start it up, and uh, then we'll see if there are any issues, and then we'll kind of address how to fix those issues. Uh, as much as I'd love to be able to create a video for you for going in to show you how to uh, to change your uh, your CMOS settings to enabled virtualization uh, unfortunately that's almost impossible because everybody's CMOS is a little bit different and um, I have no way of recording it is the other reason okay so this should be ready in another minute or two hopefully that's um, not three <laughs> So at this point, we just have to wait. Once it gets past a certain point, the rest of it goes really quick up until it hits 99%. And it uh, takes a few seconds again. Or well, that's how I recall it working most of the time. Um, the uh, the Windows file for this, this is a uh, Windows 2008 standard server. Uh, it's actually set up in trial mode, so you'll have uh, you can use a server for 120 days, 
or 180 days. Can't remember which one. I think it's 120 days from when you um, from when it's been activated, which it would have been activated uh, last week. All right, so that part is done. Uh, before you do anything else, just jump into the system part here. Okay, you want to go to processor, and you want to make sure this uh, enable PAE slash NX is turned on. If you don't have that turned on, you're going to have issues for sure. Now we go to start. And I'm getting this error come up. It says the hardware acceleration has been enabled, but it's not operable because there's a 64-bit guest system and it failed to detect the 64-bit guest. Uh, I can try to continue, but what I really need to do is I need to go in and, to my BIOS and get the, uh, it's either going to be a VTX or an AMD-V property in your BIOS. Uh, if you're on a HP machine, it's just called virtualization. And so it's, and then sometimes it's also called hyper-threading. So um, these are the things that you're looking for in your BIOS that you might have to turn on. Um, and if you're really stuck, send me an email and uh, I'll see what I can do about, uh, or send me an email in the course to, uh, and I'll see if I can find what it's called in your BIOS if you're not able to locate it yourself. Um, other than that, I'm going to stop this particular video because at this point I need to actually get someone to, uh, I don't have full admin access to this machine, so I need someone to come down and actually turn that on. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll do another video now in a few minutes uh, once I get that done, and uh, you'll get to um, to uh, see what happens or how it boots up at that point. So I'm just going to close my virtual machine, and I'll talk to you guys all later. Bye for now.